In this video, we'll see how to allocate the seismic force to individual components of the seismic force resisting system for flexible diaphragm systems. We'll see this through an example. Before we get into the example, I'd like to summarize the basic physics that are at play. Here, we're looking downward. So this is the diaphragm idealized as a beam. The red force is a lateral force and the pin and the roller represent lines of lateral resistance. They're idealized, in this case, as simple supports. I've drawn the force as a single point force in the middle of the beam. This is correct if I'm dealing with rectangular segments of the diaphragm. If I'm dealing with the diaphragm of a more complicated shape, I'll need to actually consider the distributed load that's proportional to the mass at each location of the diaphragm, but we're not doing that here. In this case, we all know that if I have a force in the middle of a simply supported beam, the reaction on each end is half of that force. So we'll be using this repeatedly throughout the problem. Let's move over to pencil and paper. So here we have our example building. We have a two-story building right here. It has seismic forces of 50 kips at the top level, which is named level two and 100 kips at the bottom level, which is named level 1, 8 foot story heights. This is an elevation looking at line D, so looking at the building from this direction. The bottom story is much larger than the top story, and we have lines of resistance here along lines A, B, C, and D. These are shear wells, and they're labeled A1, A2, B, C, D1, and D2. The upper level has shear wells in the same locations uh, where it's possible to put them in. So A1, A2, and B right here, but there's no structure over here. It's a uh, balcony or something like that. So our, our goal here is to find for each level what the force is on wall A1, A2, B, C, D1, and D2. So let's get going. The first task is to divide these forces, the 50 kips and the 100 kips, into each line of resistance. We'll start, I suppose because it's a little bit simpler, we'll start with the top story. So in the top story, uh, we don't have to do anything different than the basic physics that I showed you. We have a 50 kip force that divides out evenly uh, to line A and B. So we have here for level two, Line A, 25 kips. Line B, 25 kips. We'll see later how to divide the force out into walls A1 and A2. Now let's look at level one. For level one, we need to divide out the different areas because we allocate the force proportional to each area. So. We'll look at these dividing lines here. We'll identify that these two areas are the same size. We'll call this area one, area one, and we'll call this area two. Let's calculate the values of those areas. Area one is equal to 30 feet times 30 feet, or 900 square feet. Area 2 is equal to 15 feet right here times 20 feet. 15 feet times 20 feet, which is 300 square feet. What we need to do now is allocate the force on each area proportional to that area. So the force on area 1 will be area 1 divided by the total area times the force of 100 kips. So this is equal to 900. The total area is twice 900, one for each of these, plus another 300. That's 2100 times 100 kips. If we work that out, that's 42.9, or we'll keep a few more decimals, 8571 kips. Similarly, we can look at the force on area two as A2 
over the total times 100 kips. This is equal to 300 divided by 2100 times 100 kips. And this works out to 14.3, or we'll keep a few more decimals, 2857 kips. You can check that this is correct, or at least that it's consistent, if we multiply this times 2, again because there's two areas, add it to this force here, we'll see that it adds up to the full 100 kips. So we're not quite done. We still need to see how we allocate the force to each of these lines of resistance A, B, C. So let me sketch up a little diagram that will make this a little bit more clear. Here's our plan view. And we're going to have on this upper area a force on each line of resistance and on this lower area a force on each line of resistance. The middle area too is going to allocate a force to each line of resistance. The values for these forces are F1 over 2, as are the values of this one. Remember that we're viewing the diaphragm as being a beam simply supported between lines of resistance. So this value of the force, F1, that acts in the middle here, is divided about half and half to either side. This here is F2 over 2. And we'll remind ourselves that this is line A, B, C, and D. So we have our calculations here for level 1. And we have lines A and D. These are the same calculation. They're F1 over 2. And that is equal to, if I take this number and divide it by 2, 21.4. We'll keep a few more decimals for intermediate calculations. I now look at lines B and C, and we have F1 over 2. That's from this force here, the upper force on line B, plus F2 over 2. That's the lower force on line B. You can see it's the same calculation down here on line C. Again, if I do this calculation, F1 divided by 2, F2 divided by 2, I'll find that this force is 28.6, or keeping a few more decimals, 28.5720. So now we've finished the first part of the problem, which is to identify the forces along each line of resistance. What remains to be done, and what we'll do in a subsequent video, is to see how the forces divide out into A1 and A2, D1 and D2 on each story, and then we'll summarize the problem.